Hi, my name is Claire Ryan. I'm the coordinator of the Midwest Invasive Plant Network and also the Woody Invasives of the Great Lakes or Wiggle Collaborative. Today I'll be telling you about the invasive shrub wineberry, sometimes also called wine raspberry. The Latin name is Rubus phenicolasius. I'll tell you briefly about this species history in North America, why it's invasive, and then we'll take a look at how to identify it in the field. Wineberry is native to Northeastern Asia, including Japan, the Korean Peninsula, and Eastern China. It was brought to North America to interbreed with other raspberry and blackberry species in the late 1800s. It's occasionally cultivated for fruit, but it's not widespread or popular. You probably won't find wineberry fruit in the grocery store. Today it occurs outside of cultivation, most frequently in the Appalachian region and, the, and southern New England. It does occur in the Midwest as well, particularly in the Ohio River Valley, the Ozarks, and a little bit in the Chicago area. It's probably hardy to about zone five, but it may spread north further into the Great Lakes region with climate change. In areas where it's prevalent, wineberry has been reported in a number of habitats, including disturbed sunny areas and shaded woodlands. It prefers moist and rich soils, and it grows most vigorously in full sun. It spreads over distance by birds eating the fruit and then depositing the seeds, but it can form thickets locally by root tipping and suckering. Root tipping occurs when the canes touch the ground and grow new roots where they contact the ground. Here it's growing along a fence line, and it's not clear if the property owner planted it purposefully at some point or if a bird dropped it here. Let's take a look at how to identify this species and tell it apart from other rubus species. Like other raspberries, wineberry produces long thorny canes, which can be up to nine feet long. The canes are covered in fine prickly red bristles, and those bristles are the number one clue that it's wineberry you're looking at rather than another species. The leaves are compound with three leaflets. The end leaflet is the biggest and may be shallowly lobed. The leaves are green on the top side and then white on the bottom. The leaf stems, also called petioles, also have the red bristles. Flowers emerge in the midsummer and have five white heart-shaped petals surrounded by five bristly pointed sepals arranged in a star shape. Sepals cover the fruit as it matures. Then the fruits, which ripen in the fall, look similar to commercial red raspberries. Like many other raspberry spe species, it fruits on second year growth, which is called floricane. Most common native raspberries fruit in early summer, so if you see fruit in the fall, you might have wine raspberry. If you have wine berry on your property, we do recommend that you remove it because it's considered to be an early detection species in most of the Great Lakes region. Wineberry suckers aggressively from the roots when it's caught, so it's important to use a management method that will address the roots. There are native rubus species that you can look into growing instead if you like having fruit, and those include wild black raspberry and common blackberry, but you should know that those can also be aggressive in a garden setting. You can learn more about how to control wineberry and about landscape alternatives on our website, woodyinvasives.org. And please subscribe to our channel for more useful videos like this one.